This is Abhay. In this video, I'll guide you through how to install Anatem on Oracle Cloud Always Free Tire Setup. So this video will be greatly helpful and you will have a free server for live running Anatem automations and with a secure and easy to manage Anatem instance setup. This method is perfect for those who don't uh, uh, actually code or use command line interfaces, those who are very similar with low code uh, softwares and it will have a completely visual interface. However, this method will require a lot of resources of the server because we'll be installing few more softwares and few more tools to get it uh, set up. However, if you prefer a lightweight setup and if your server is with limited resources and you do not have uh, great resources, then you can follow a different method with Oracle Cloud free tier only. Uh, I'll uh, put the description, I'll put the link of that video in the description available uh, for this video. So you can uh, follow that method too. Uh, so let's start uh, with this particular method. Uh, to install uh, self-host Anaten, now you have to come to your Anaten DOS. This is just an, a doc explaining how to uh, set up that. However, do not worry, I have created a doc for you and this video is for this setup only. So I'll be only using Oracle Cloud interface. So uh, that is a free uh, tier. Oracle is one of the few companies in the world who offers a uh, cloud free tier. Uh, and what they offer in free tier uh, within the compute segment, that is they offer AMD compute instance as well as ARM compute instance. With AMD, you get two always free AMD compute instances. That means always free servers. And with ARM also, they are offering uh, some of the highest level of 24 GB of memory as well as uh, four cores of CPU. So that is, I think, one of the best and uh, free uh, servers available by Oracle. So you should definitely try. Uh, to get started with this, you can click on start for free button. Then you will be redirected here. And once you redirect it here, uh, you will be uh, set up for Oracle Cloud uh, free tier account. And uh, it says account information, you will have to set up this account. So the prerequisites for this is having a credit card. And once you have a credit card, you can use it in Oracle, get it started. So it's a always free tier account. It's just for verification, you, you will not be charged anything uh, for using this. The second prerequisite for this, that is the domain name, mm -hmm. having a domain name by which you can access the Anaten, uh, your Anaten instance publicly. So once you have these two prerequisites, you can get started with this setup. So uh, once you have Oracle Cloud setup, you can come to Oracle Cloud dashboard. Once you visit the Oracle Cloud dashboard, make sure you have uh, this particular uh, tooltip bar on your uh, screen. That is, you're using Oracle free tier account. And if you're using free tier account and you will not be charged anything. So once you have this, um, you can visit the dashboard. You can click on instances, either search instances here or click on VM instance. So once you click on create a VM instance, a screen will pop up in front of you and you will have options to select the options and get started with the server configurations. I'll, you'll have to name the uh, server first. I'll just name Anaten. Uh, you don't have to select anything here. Make sure the availability domain is selected and it is always free eligible. You, you just have to make sure to have your uh, server always and lifetime free. In the image and shape section, you have, you have to click on edit. Instead of Oracle Linux set, you have to click on change image. Once you clicked on change domain from Oracle Linux to Ubuntu, uh, you have to come here and select canonical Ubuntu 22.04. This is the most stable version of the Linux. You have to click on select image. And once you selected, you have to select the shape. So with this uh, free tier, as I mentioned, you will get uh, two instances, AMD compute instance and ARM compute instance. So ARM is the most powerful instance. You can choose that too. However, I have used it already on my account. So this Ampere is an ARM based processor. And you can see that service limit status. I have already used 100%, 24 of the uh, 24 gig of, GB of RAM as well as four cores of the CPU. So I'll not be able to use it. So you can click on speciality and previous generation. So those are the actual AMD compute instances with uh, one OCPU and one GB memory each. So I'll be selecting just for and demo uh, this instance. You can choose any one. I'll click select shape. Once that's done, you have to come here, primary VNIC information that will be auto filled. Or if you want to create a new VNIC, you can create from here. Or if you want to choose existing, if you had an account before with Oracle, you can choose one or create a new one from directly. You don't have to select anything from here. Um, you can just uh, leave it as it is. The second point is generating the SSH key pairs. That is how you can access the servers. If you know SSH, how to generate the SSH keys and all those things, then you can continue and paste the public keys or upload the SSH keys from here. However, the simplest method is downloading the private key from here uh, and saving the public key from here. So that will be downloaded to your computer. Once that's done, you have to uh, come here. If you want to specify the boot volume size, that is the storage of server. With the free tier account, you get 200 GBs of server. 
If you want to uh, specify it, 200, I have already consumed 153 GB of it. However, if you want to uh, set up uh, any custom size, you can set up it. Or if you just unselect it, it will be 47 gigabyte by default and it will be uh, it will be automatically created. So to sum up, you have to come here, you have to set up the name, make sure you have always free eligible. Then select the image as canonical Ubuntu 20.04. Select the shape. You can select either ARM, Ampere or the AMD one, the uh, uh, previous generation processors. And uh, download the SSH keys, private and public key, and just hit on create. Once the server is added, it will have a provisioning set here with an orange color. Once it's green and running, you will have to follow the next steps. So next step is to uh, click on the instances detail here and click on virtual cloud network. Once you click the virtual cloud network, you have to click on the subnet. You have to click on default security list. So that is allowing some ports of your web server to the public. So we can access the web server and install uh, the NITN as well as the other tools that those are required for NITN. So you have to click on add ingress rule. Before doing that, make sure that your 22 port is already enabled here. So that is the SSH port by which we'll be connecting with the server. If it is not enabled, you have to click on ingress rule type uh, 0.0.0.0 0 here and type 22 here. So for me, it's already enabled. If not, you have to make sure you are enabling this um, from here. Then I'll click on add ingress rule. Now we'll have to add few rules. I'll have to select the source as CIDR. I'll type the destination for our 80 and 443. So these ports are actually HTTP and HTTPS port by which our uh, public website as well as IP address will be accessible um, any website or any uh, application like Anatom. I'll add the rules here. Now next set of rules are 81 and 443. These specific rules uh, will be required for a few softwares we'll be installing that is Portainer as well as uh, Nginx Proxy Manager. Uh, it's 9443. Uh, and you you can add the description. Once you add these rules, uh, you can click on add in this rule. And the first last rule we'll have to add. Make sure you are adding in source CIDR that is 0.0.0/0, and here add 5678. So this is the port of Anaten in which the Anaten will be installed. I'll just type Anaten here, and I'll click on add in this rules. Once the ingress rules is added, uh, make sure. Uh, you go to virtual cloud networks uh sorry you have to go to the dashboard and from dashboard you can visit instances from instances you can access the instance that is available in your account and make sure you copy its public ip address now uh, let's start the step uh, for which we'll be connecting with our instance once you copied the ip address uh, now it's time to connect with your server if you're using windows you can uh, follow a guide linked in the description for connecting to the server you can use putty and partition for uh, connecting with your server. However, if you use Mac, you can use terminal and uh, you can follow this process. So I, I'll tell you exactly from where you Windows users can continue. Uh, so uh, you can check the timestamps uh, in the description of this video. So uh, for the Mac users to connect, you will have to write this command SSH hyphen I. And this is the path of the key where it is stored. We have downloaded the key from uh, Oracle Cloud and the keys are stored here. So this is the actual path of the key that I have written in my uh, notepad. So you can see that SHH hyphen I, and this is the actual path where the key is stored. Ubuntu is this particular uh, username of this server and at the rate that is the IP address. So I'll go in my uh, notepad and I'll just copy this and then I'll open my Mac's terminal. So you can uh, search terminal in the Mac and open the terminal. I have another terminal installed, so I'll be using it as per my preference. So I'll just clear and I'll hit this command. So once this command enters, it is asking for the authenticity. You just have to type yes. Once it is asked in Mac, sometimes this issue might happen. If you download the key from Oracle Cloud, so this warning might become in front of you. If this warning comes, uh, I'll just share a simple command. So you can just copy paste and then uh, go ahead. Particular command, chmod, you have to add a single colon and inside which you have to, have to add the path of this uh, key. So this particularly happens as I mentioned earlier for downloaded from Oracle. Now I'll use the command again to SSH to connect to my server. So this is the command. This will again available in the description. And once this is entered, you will uh, be connected with your server. So you can see that all of the stats of your server are listed here. So this is Ubuntu at the return end end. So that's the server we set up. You can hit clear and start the process from here. The next step is as per the Google document. So this will be available either document or a link uh, to get started with. So first you'll have to update the files, uh, Ubuntu files that are available on your server. You can just copy the first command, go to your terminal, 
and hit it. And will take some time uh, to execute. Once this is executed, you can come back to your document and you have to enter the second command that is sudo apt upgrade hyphen y. Again, it will take some time and uh, once this is done, you can execute the next command. So once that done, uh, you can move to the next command. Uh, the step two is here by installing Docker and Docker Compose. So that is, we'll be installing the Docker. You can copy this particular command from here. You can go to your terminal and enter the command. Again, this command will take a few more time uh, than the previous commands. So you, you just have to be patient while these commands get executed here. This is done. Uh, you can move to the next step that is installing Portainer. So the Portainer is a graphical UI by which you can access the Docker and you can manage everything from there. So from here, you will be not required to use any uh, hard line of code. So it will be a low code setup from here. You can copy this command from here, go to your terminal and just hit enter. Just like the previous command, it will take some more time to download. So you just have to be patient. Okay, so the portainer has been installed here. So once Porten is installed, now the work is to visit the graphical UI and do the setup from there. So you can uh, go to Oracle and copy your server IP address. And it, you just have to enter this particular the uh, URL, https uh, semicolon slash slash uh, your IP address colon 9443. So by which we'll be accessing the port in our graphical UI. So it will show, show a privacy error. You just have to click on advanced and go to proceed to a thing and save. Now it will prompt you to set up an admin username and password. So I'll quickly set up a password here. Once password is set up, uh, you'll be logged into the portal. You have to click on get started. Once click on get started, now it's time to go to the next step. After installing uh, Portainer, you have to uh, create a doc Docker network for NPM, NPM and NNN. So you have to click go to networks and add network. And here you'll have to add a network named as NPM hyphen network. And the driver is bridge. I'll come here. I'll go to this particular local section and then go to networks. I'll click on add network. I'll name it that's npm hyphen network and the driver is big bridge and click on create the network. Once the network is connected, it's time to go to the next step. That is the step number five. That is install the Nginx proxy manager by which we'll be uh, allowing our N10 IP address to go to the public. So this is how you will be installing the uh, Nginx proxy manager. You have to go stacks and click on add stacks. And once added stacks, you, you can just rename it as Nginx Proxy Manager. So I'll copy this code. I'll go to Portainer. I'll click on Stacks. I'll click on Add Stack. In the web editor, I'll uh, put up this particular code from here. I'll name this stacks as Nginx Proxy Manager. I'll just, and I'll just click on Deploy Stack. This stack has been successfully deployed. So to access this Nginx Proxy Manager, to check if it is has been correctly set up, you have to come here. Copy the IP address and add colon 81. Once you hit 81, you, you should be able to uh, see this particular screen. Now let's move to the next step. To access this particular thing, the default login address is admin at the example.com. I'll put it here. And the default password is change me. I'll put it here and I'll sign in. Once I sign in here, you'll have to change the email. I'll quickly change this email. Okay, this has been set up here. Now let's move to the next step. This actual step is deploying the NNN just like we deployed the Nginx Maxi Manager using Portainer. So here, make sure you replace your domain.com and password accordingly. So uh, here I've added nnn.mydomain.com. Uh, so I'll just put nnn.yourdomain.com. So make sure you replace it with your actual domain unless it will not work. So I'll just copy this entire code. I'll go to Portainer. Once I go to Portainer, I click on Add Stack. I'll put this particular file here and just name the stack as Nnn. You don't have to do anything more than this and click on Deploy Stack. Nnn has been successfully deployed. You'll have to go to Oracle and copy the IP address of your server and go to your domains DNS. So this is the process from which we'll be moving forward and just mapping your domain name with the Nnn. So you have to just create an A record in your domain and type the subdomain that you have set up. Either you can use the root domain, either you can use the subdomain. It's your preference. You just have to add 
this particular A record with your IP address and the subdomain you choose. If you are using the root domain, you can use add the red or you can just add nothing uh, there. So here it is annotated. I'll just click on creates and save. Once this is saved, this domain uh, A record will be created. Now it's time to make sure that this particular NATN setup has been created uh, su successfully or not. We'll have to copy the IP address again and go to 5678 colon 5678. And once you visit that, you should be able to visit this particular screen. This means that your NATN setup is successful. However, it is not configured to use without a SSL certificate. So we'll have to use the domain to generate a SSL certificate and then uh, connect it with this particular port. So uh, this is how the next uh, step will be. Once you created a, a record, you'll have to go to the Nginx proxy manager that we have logged in before. You have to go to host, click on proxy host, click on add proxy host. Once you added that, you have to uh, enter that uh, particular domain name uh, that you have selected for Anaton. So I'll just copy it from here. This was my domain name. I'll enter it here. You should uh, put the scheme as HTTP. You can forward, forward his name as Anaton. If this has been not working for you by any reason, you can just enter your server IP address that this particular address that we copied earlier. But however, we have created a uh, network that has the same network. You will be able to use the NATN as that. Forward port is the NATN port 5678. You have to make sure that you just uh, turn this on block common exploit as well as web socket support. So this is the most important thing. You have to go to SSL, click on request new SSL certificate can click on force SSL and HTTP to support. And this is the email address. You can create an I agree and click on save. This setup, uh, your domain is configured to use the Anaton. You can just click on your domain and then you will be able to see the Anaton's dashboard from here. So this is a pretty straightforward setup. We just had to use a terminal for first two, three steps. And then we use port inner as well as Nginx proxy manager. So from here, you will be able to set up the Anaton. But from here, you will not be able to set up the NATN because this is not configured to use the secure cookie. You can skip this process and make the environment variable and make it false. But however, it is not recommended by NATN too. So now from here, you can uh, set up your account. You are inside NATN. You can create workflow from scratches. You can um, do anything as you want and automate your daily tasks using this particular steps. So that's it uh, for this particular video. If you have any suggestions or if you need help with this, you can ask me in the comments or reach out to me by social channels or email address. So I'll be happy to help you out. If you have any suggestions related to this video, make sure you convey to me via comments. Uh, have a great day. Thank you for watching this video. Bye.